Okay, to begin, you need to know that I like to spend time outside at nighttime listening to the radio. Never usually anything specific, just whatever happens to be on. And to answer your question as to why, well, I guess it's just something I had always found comforting. Whether it's going for a drive in my car to nowhere really in particular, or just sitting out on my back deck, staring up at the night sky, I would usually have some kind of FM radio playing in the background. Looking back, I would have to say the habit started back when I was about 6 or 7, and my dad would always sit in the backyard in front of a small fire that he had built, listening to the radio, usually to the news or to country. He said that it was a way of feeling connected from a distance. He would sit for hours at a time too, sometimes not coming back inside until sunrise. A few times I would try to join him by the fire, but would inevitably get bored and just go back inside and watch cartoons or something. Funny enough though, as I got older, I would end up picking up the same habit. Like father, like son, I guess. In high school, me and my buddies would often go on nighttime drives at down roads that neither of us knew. Me even getting lost quite a few times. Just blasting the radio on a station that played metal music. Like I said, I never really grew out of this habit. And when my old man passed away in my senior year, I had inherited his old radio. From then to the present, I spent hours once the sun set, just sitting in the backyard, listening to different stations, just like he used to. It was the same that night, a couple weeks ago, just surfing through different stations, until I finally settled on 96.7 FM, a rock music station. For a while, everything was going just fine. Just me, the music, and the quiet night until, in the middle of a dream on, the radio started fading out to static. It was just a small change at first. Basically, just a light static buzz with the music fading a little in its volume. But then though, I noticed the static essentially swallow the other sounds from the radio, until it was nothing but white noise. What the heck? I started trying to tap it to try and maybe knock the signal back, but that didn't seem to work. I started fooling with the antenna, thinking maybe that it needed to be readjusted, figuring that I must have knocked it out of range without noticing. That wasn't working either. Great, I thought, annoyed, turning the knob to another station. Had to be during one of my favorite songs too. The next station came through, and from the sound of it, it was one of those mainstream hip-hop stations that I couldn't stand. So I flipped again to one of the comedy shows. I decided that I would listen to this for a while before finally heading in for the night and off to bed. I did have to work in the morning. Well, just like 96.7, everything was fine until I started hearing the static again. Just like before. It ended up dominating the rest of the sounds coming from the radio. What's going on with this thing? I wondered, tapping it on the sides again. I tried tuning to all of the other different stations, all of them being drowned in clouds of interference. I even bent the antenna about five different ways, almost breaking the dang thing in frustration, trying to get a clear signal. Nothing. Every station, just static. All except for one that is. That one I said was a hip hop station. That was the only one that seemed to actually come in clearly. Well, sort of. Maybe I should specify. I said it was a hip hop music station, but that's not entirely accurate. It was more of a mixed droning noise with synthetic sounds passing through at certain points. Honestly, I didn't think that in and of itself was that weird, but again, just figuring it was some new quote-unquote trendy type of music that kids were into these days. But that is until I heard something else coming from the radio as well. Listening closer, I could hear some sort of garbled voice blended amid the droning. It sounded mechanical, sounding like someone was speaking with one of those artificial voice boxes. Because of this, I couldn't tell you a word of what was being said. 
I did notice, though, the sound of different letters, like it was trying to form words, maybe in a different language or something. With this, I figured maybe it was a foreign broadcast, a station from another country maybe, though I wonder how they had managed to broadcast all the way out here, deep in the south, you know. In any case, I tried one more time to switch the station before saying, ah, screw it, and heading in for the night. Figuring whatever that was, it was just a one-time deal, a freak occurrence, and I'd be able to listen to the radio like normal again tomorrow, right? Well, that idea died when I went outside the next morning, realizing that I had left it out there by accident, and apparently still turned on, and found that it was still playing that weird station. The first thing to go through my mind, of course, was, how is it still playing? The battery should have given out long before then. Given how much I use it, and it had been at least a couple of months since the last time I had changed them out. And then, there was still the question of what this station even was. What was it even playing? Like I said, it wasn't exactly what I would call music. And what was it saying or trying to say? Now, I tried to flip the stations again, but nothing. Static fuzz all around. But finally, realizing that I had to head out for work... I took out the batteries and set the radio on the counter, deciding that I would replace them when I got home. That'll fix it, I thought. At work, one of my coworkers poured her at his radio playing Sirius XM while we worked, repairing the transmission in an SUV that somebody had brought in. I wondered if maybe he had heard it as well, that weird station. When I asked him, though, it was obvious that he didn't have a clue what the heck I was talking about. All I listened to was this, he said, pointing to his radio. Oh, well, last night I was outside listening to mine when this weird station started playing and all the other stations weren't coming through anymore. He asked me what kind of music it was playing and to which I described, as best I could, what it was like. I asked him, being a lot more into modern music trends than I was, as well as an aspiring musician, Constantly showing off his EDM tracks on SoundCloud. If he knew what kind of music it was and maybe he knew what stations might be playing it. But still, it was obvious that he didn't know. He told me that it sort of sounded like some kind of lo fi or a synth wave station. Of course, I had asked him what the heck that even was. Yeah, yeah, I'm out of touch, I know. And then he pulled up YouTube and showed me something called 24-7 synth wave radio. Admittedly, listening to it for a moment, it did sound similar to what I was hearing the previous night, though it still didn't quite match. The music I was hearing from Porter's phone was clear and obviously only music, unlike what I had heard from the radio which sounded more like this being put through a blunder on its highest setting, with a bunch of nails before then mixing it with a droning noise. Not to mention, that still didn't answer the other question. What station was the one playing it, and why and how were all the other stations not working? I gave this no further thought though, given that it was clear that Porter didn't seem to know and, like I said earlier, I figured a change of batteries would solve the problem anyway. What did it matter what station it was and how it was playing, right? On the way home, I was driving to the Walgreens to grab the batteries, blasting my music as usual. When I started hearing it, it began to fade into a static cloud. It was a small change at first, just like the radio in the backyard. Because of this, I didn't really notice it at first. And plus, it was cloudy out, so I figured it was probably messing with the signal. Of course, soon, the music was lost completely to the static. I started flipping around the stations, but you guessed it, all of them were gone. Nothing but a cloud of interference. Dang, is the weather really that bad? Come on, there's gotta be one station that. I stopped when I started hearing something from the radio. It sounded like some retro synth music, similar to what I had heard from Porter's phone. Though again, not nearly as polished or clean with its sound. This confused me at first. Uh, the car, too. I looked at the radio to see the station labeled as... 66.69 FUTRFM. 
At least that's what it looked like when I was reading it. There was something else that confused me, seeing that the digits were sort of jumbled like half completed. You know, the way you would see an old digital clock that were getting worn out, even though my car's model is actually only one from last year. Well, anyway, having the same problem that I was with the radio, not being able to play any other stations except for this one, I decided to cut the radio off and pick up the batteries. Admittedly, a small part of me did wonder if it was even worth it to bother with the new radio batteries, given that apparently whatever this broadcast was, wasn't just isolated to it. After picking up the batteries, I headed home where, after changing them, I turned the radio on and started station surfing. As I had hoped, they all played normally. So then, what the heck was that station, I had wondered. That led me to try Google searching for 66.69 FUTR FM. This turned out to lead to a dead end though. Next, I tried searching for synthwave radio stations which led to a few results, each of them with a few recorded tracks, as well as some live recordings of their broadcast through YouTube. I clicked on them but realized that none of them matched up. None of them were what I was hearing through the radio, at least not by themselves. You see, that's when I realized that the strange music from the radio it was actually a weird sort of blend of every one of these stations, with a low-pitched droning as a sort of foundation or a background noise for it. That night, I would go through my typical nighttime ritual of listening to the radio in the backyard, now with fresh batteries. This time, though, I was waiting and ready, hoping to catch the broadcast again. I thought maybe a further listen might shed a bit of light on what exactly it was and maybe even where it was from. Just like the night before, everything was normal for a while. Hours started ticking by with the night getting later and later and still. Nothing seemed to be happening with the radio. But come on, I thought impatiently. It was getting to be about 2.30 to 3 in the morning and I was about to give up, figuring maybe it really was just a fluke after all. When it started happening again... I was listening to a late night talk show when I heard it start fading in and out of the signal. And just as I had hoped, all the other stations went down with it. I turned until hitting the only station that was in static, 66.9 FM, before leaning in close to try and listen to it. At first, it just seemed to play the same constant droning synth loop that I had heard before. But then I finally heard the weird distorted voice from before. It sounded as garbled and dang near incomprehensible as last time. This time, concentrating as hard as I possibly could, even holding the dang thing straight up to my ear, which left them ringing afterwards, I could hear the deep-toned robot voice start listing what sounded like numbers and a mix of letters. To the best that I can remember, here's what I heard. 1,000, Edgar C., Nolly to do. Asset Altitude 35, Sweat Altitude 64, and then I heard this following. Naki oi ri mi, mi rat pipi ni te ujua duaos, tis aktamung tum te mi, eg mi tu afrihi. After that, I went back to the synth music. I sat listening for a little while longer, hoping to maybe catch it, the weird voice speaking again. Unfortunately, though, I just couldn't hold out long enough and I ended up falling asleep before I had heard another message, if there was one anyway. This morning, I woke up in my yard chair to find the radio still playing the same synth music. I heard it play for about another three to five minutes before it seemed to get swallowed up by interference. After this, I turned to find the other stations working again like they were supposed to. After mentally kicking myself for falling asleep while trying to listen, I tried to think again about what I had heard, or rather thought that I had heard. What was that, and what the heck was he saying? Heck, who was it that was even speaking to begin with? I mean, where in God's name was it coming from? It was only a few hours later that day, though, that I had heard the broadcast again. This time, I was able to use my phone to record the parts of the voice speaking, and I noticed too that it seemed louder than before. 
It sounded more emphasized as well, like whoever it was that was speaking was shouting in the microphone, like they were scared almost. At first, it was more or less the same message as last night. 1000 Edgar C. Naglid 2, Asset Altitude 35, Sweat Altitude 64, Naku Oi Riemi, Mi Ratapid Nitro Drows, Egged Me 2 of Ira. And then about 15 minutes later, I heard this being shouted, Take me the oofed out of re, I'd not not it be re, it roos, for everything roos, tith ruthy me, leaps to me too. This was when I realized that the messages seemed to actually repeat. For about another two hours or so, it cycled in a constant loop, starting with the first one with the shouting one following it half an hour or so later. Of course, being as disjointed and jumbled as it was, I couldn't make heads or tails out of a bit of that. So I called my old buddy Reggie over to try and see if maybe he could tell me anything about it. I mean, he did work at a TV station, so I figured if anybody might have a clue, he might. After listening to it, though, Reggie said he had never seen or heard of anything like this before. I asked him if he knew of any other stations that played the weird synth music but he knew nothing about that either. The only places I know that play anything like that would be YouTube or maybe Spotify, he had said. When I asked him about the messages, I mean, what was being said, he replied that he too couldn't make out much of it either. He told me that he could try looking into it later on that night. I asked if he would be able to bunk over, maybe bring his equipment to my place, and we would be able to look into it together. Uh, he declined though. I have to work tomorrow plus. I need to take this into the studio anyway for proper examination. He had had a point, so I decided to let him take it home with him, asking him to listen to it and let me know if something new comes up. He agreed before leaving and taking the radio with him. I didn't hear back from him again until two days later. In that time, I hadn't heard the broadcast again. Something, though, I attribute to the fact that I hadn't actually been listening to the radio, not even in the car, not even gone anywhere either. When he did get back to me over the phone, it was to more or less tell me that he came up empty-handed as far as where the broadcast was actually coming from. He did, however, apparently manage to clean up a bit of the warped speech and tell me what was being said. That's when things would begin taking a sharp left turn. This is the translation that he had sent me. Can you hear me? I'm trapped in between worlds. It's hurting me. Get me out of here. Needless to say, I found this extremely unnerving. Who was this and where were they and what were they talking about? Why did he seem so hysterical? What does he mean by trapped in between worlds? I asked Reggie if he was absolutely sure that was what actually was being said through the broadcast and he replied by sending me a recorded fragment of the broadcast, followed by an audio translation. Listening to both of them side by side, as sure as heck he was right, that really was what was being said. He told me this was likely a pirated signal, despite the fact that he still didn't know why he couldn't pin the source. Even pirated signals have to come from somewhere, he told me, but for whatever reason, this one seems to be coming from nowhere. How? I asked. Beats the heck out of me. Like I've been saying, I've never heard anything at all like this before. Does the voice sound at all familiar? Maybe if we found a match for her. Not likely, he interrupted, laughing sarcastically. The voice is far too distorted. It was honestly everything that I could do to put the words together the way that I did. Heck, the only reason I was able to do that much was because I recognized bits and pieces of the words and found a way to isolate them from the background noise. Oh, I said defeated. Well, was there anything else? Weren't there numbers also? Yeah, I, I think so actually. Hold on a sec. I heard him shuffle papers around. Ah, yeah, here we go. I got a piece of paper and a pen handy. He then went on to tell me the coordinates for 1000 degrees longitude, 35 degrees east latitude, and 64 degrees west. After that, I thanked him before hanging up. For a while, I sat thinking, wondering what was going on. What was this, this message, the station, the voice, I mean, all of it. 
What actually was it? What did any of it mean? Not only that, but why was I the one hearing it? I know that's a bit of a dramatic question to ask, but still. Why was I the one that kept catching the broadcast? Given that no one else seemed to even know what the heck I was talking about. What was he afraid of? That's when I started wondering what he meant by, it's after me. What was after him? Where did it come from? Between worlds, maybe. But then still, what did that even mean? The biggest question though is what would happen if I decided to investigate further? Admittedly, I was quite intimidated by now. I mean, the bizarre nature of it all coupled with the mysterious and quite ominous message. It was really starting to get to me by that point. Disturbed or not though, it was clear to me that I wasn't going to get any peace of mind from this until I got some answers. The problem then was how. How was I supposed to find the meaning behind messages from a radio station that, by rights, basically doesn't exist? Where would I go to even start? Well, for that, I decided to look into the coordinates that Reggie gave me. Using Google Earth, I managed to pinpoint a location that I actually wasn't too far away from me. It was a spot about 30 miles outside of my town, about two and a half to three hours away from where I lived at. The thing is, at least from what I had been led most of my life to believe, there wasn't anything out in that area for at least another 10 or so miles past that point. And according to Google Maps, this was indeed the case, that whole area being essentially barren. So then, what the heck was out there, and how was it there if it wasn't showing up on the map? I tried multiple times to zoom in on the area, but each time resulted with the same conclusion, though there was nothing there. I then texted Reggie asking if he would be willing to look into it. About 20 minutes went by before he responded with the same answer. I asked him if he was sure, if it weren't possible that somebody was sending out a pirate signal. Not likely, trust me, unless I'm mistaken. In order to hijack main airways like this, they would need some sort of studio set up. Some kind of place of operations with at least some basic radio equipment. And with that, I was stumped once again. With no leads, no clues, no evidence, and frankly, no real will to keep pushing at the matter, I decided to shut everything down and call it a night. That is, until late that night when, as I was about to go to sleep, my phone started ringing off the hook with a call from Reggie. Oh man, I was cut off before I could even finish. Dude, something's going on. He shouted this excited at the end of the phone. What? What do you mean? Those coordinates. You know how there was nothing there earlier. Yeah, why? Now look at them now. I booted the computer back up and pulled up Google Earth again, inputting the coordinates. Sure enough, zooming in close, there it was. A small rundown looking sort of shack with a satellite on the roof. Do you see it? I didn't answer at first. I mean, I was speechless. I had to rub my eyes and even slap myself to make sure that I was actually awake and seeing this. Finally, I managed to stammer out. Yeah, but, but how? I know, right? He shouted, obviously geeking out about this. It just showed up like a minute ago, when the station started playing again on the radio. When I looked again on Google Earth, and there it was. Wait, what do you mean it just appeared? Exactly what I said, man, just a minute ago. It wasn't there, but as soon as the station started playing on the radio, abacadabra, there it is. He cackled like he was a Dr. Frankenstein. I wasn't as ecstatic about this. Instead, I was kind of lost. If I wasn't looking right at myself in that moment, I would have told him that he needed to quit smoking whatever he was on. Of course, that didn't at all explain how this was even possible. In fact, this obviously created a whole new generation of questions, one that I wasn't certain I had any real means to answer. Heck, at this point, do I even really want to know? That was the other thing. I still couldn't shake the feeling that whatever this was, it wasn't something that I had any business screwing around with. I mean, when it came to things like this, things that shouldn't be possible like this, especially in this situation where everything was just so ominous. 
and typically it wasn't a good idea to go tumbling down the rabbit hole, right? At the same time though, I just couldn't seem to let it go. I just had to know, danger or not. Hold up, hold up. What the heck? I was instantly brought back from my thoughts into reality. Where is it? What? What happened? Ironically enough, as soon as I had asked, I actually saw it myself. The station wasn't on the screen anymore. How in the... On the other end, I could hear the frantic clacking of his keyboard, followed by the slamming of his fist on the desk and him shouting, It's gone. The station's disappeared. Calm down. What happened? What do you mean by disappeared? Again, exactly what I said, dude. It just vanished. Do you see it? Yeah, I'm looking at it. Wait, what happened? Where'd it go? Heck if I know. I mean, you saw it too, right? It was just there, wasn't it? Yeah, I saw, but where is it now? No clue. One moment it's there while the radio was playing, and now it's... Wait a minute, say that again. What? That it was just there a minute ago. No, the other part about the radio. Well, what about it? And gears were starting to turn in my brain now. Didn't you say that you saw it appear when the radio started playing the broadcast again? Yeah, why? Well, how about now is it still playing? For a second, it was silent before he replied that it wasn't. Oh, Reg, I hate to sound like a nerd like you here, but you don't suppose the broadcast may have had something to do with the station being there, do you? Holy crap, he replied, realization flooding into his voice. Dude, how did I not think of that? Yeah, I think you're right. What about the broadcast? Did it change at all? Maybe say anything different? No, not that I'm aware of. Just the same stuff as before. Why? What are you planning to do here? I thought for a moment before finally settling on a decision. Tomorrow afternoon, I declared. You and me will meet up out there and see it for ourselves. Finally put this whole thing to bed. Though I said this with confidence, the truth was, I wasn't feeling confident much at all. Either way though, I was ready to be done with all of this and I had said it now, so no sense in trying to back out. 12 o'clock the next afternoon, I made the trek out to the area, arriving at about 2.45 with Reggie arriving about an hour later. Once there, we just sat and waited for nightfall. The day moved by slowly, seeming like night wasn't going to come at all and by extension, and neither would the broadcast. Eventually though, the sun went down and just a few hours later, the radio started going through its motions of fuzzing up every station with static until there was only one. 66.69 FM was functional. Just as I had hoped to, at least back then, the broadcast started playing and we saw the station begin to appear. I remember how me and Reggie looked when we saw this. We were astonished, we were amazed, and we were horrified even. Or at least I was. Sweet mother of freaking God. I heard him whisper, his mouth still hanging slack. The station continued to fade into existence right in front of us while the music from the radio actually got louder and louder. Finally, it fully materialized and the sounds were now near deafening. That's when we heard the message again, this time booming. I was about to switch it off when Reggie stopped me. If we stop it now, it might disappear again. He then waved over toward the building. Come on, let's see what's inside. I stepped forward very slowly and I could feel my legs shaking with every step. Behind me, I could hear that same message from the radio. What the heck is he saying? I met Reggie at the front door and I could tell, despite his excited demeanor before her, he too was feeling anxious from the way that he was slowly, shakily reaching out to grab the doorknob. Neither of us knew what would happen, if anything at all. Honestly, I was almost half expecting his hand would pass right through it, like it was a hologram or something. Instead, he grabbed the knob tight and began jiggling it. It seemed to take a bit of effort before it finally creaked open inward. Inside was completely dark, somehow even standing out of the pitch black of the night, as well as dead silent. I took out my phone and began trying to use the flashlight on my camera to look around, but to no use. My light might as well have been a small lit match trying to light up the inside of a cave. Hello? I called into the darkness. Nothing replied from within, 
and Reggie tried calling out, but that too resulted in silence. Reggie made his way inside. Almost instantly, his body was swallowed by the darkness within. Reggie, I called out, reaching out to him. Reggie. I retracted my hand, however, when I felt something wet to push back against it. Huh? What the? I reached out again to the opening. But that's when I noticed it wasn't actually an open space in the doorway. Whatever it was felt like I was touching a gel mold. Wet and flexible and malleable. What is this stuff? I wondered, now beyond disbelief. What even is this place? Reggie! I called out again, but there was no answer. I stepped closer and cupped my hands around my mouth and shouted, Reggie, you there? Still nothing. I was actually about to try going in after him when I noticed something shifting with the radio, causing me to stop and look back at it. The speech had started to jumble another voice seeming to integrate with the original. The background droning noise also began distorting, fluctuating back and forth between high and low pitches. The new voice began to overpower the old one and it started to grow distant. And then I watched the gelatinous mass in the doorway in front of me begin wriggling, undulating, and pulsing violently. The new voice was now loudly repeating the message while the old one was now faded away completely. That's when something big was hurled out of the dark doorway straight into me and knocking me over. Picking myself up, I watched as what looked like a haggard, raggedy looking man was scrambling to his feet. He was tall and looked like he had been starved near to death with a long, unkempt beard and hair that was hanging past his shoulders. His clothing looked old and worn out, even seeing more than a few holes in various places. I'm out, he said, breathing heavily. He did it, holy sweet Jesus, I'm free. I'm finally free. Who the heck are you? I shouted, alarmed. Who are you and where is Reggie? He looked at me, smiling joyfully. His eyes were wide like an animal with red veins spread all across them, looking like tiny tree roots. He set me free, he whispered eagerly. What, what do you mean, free from what? He pointed to the station. From there, I looked over to the opening again. It was calm again, dark and empty. I've been stuck in there for years, but I'm out now. I'm finally out, finally free. He started cackling again. What happened in there? I asked, snapping his attention back to me. Years back, I heard the message from the radio when I found this place. I went inside and it took me and forced me to keep playing the broadcast. It let the other one go, the one before me. He cackled like a lunatic before adding, Now I've been finally let go and he's taken my place. I'm free. Who did? He looked at me for a second puzzled. Who is it and why was it forcing you to keep playing the broadcast? His face drained of color almost immediately. His look of glee falling into one of cold terror. He pointed to the station again. It don't got a name, it's pure evil. It likes to see us suffer. That's why it makes us keep playing the broadcast, you see. He stopped, shuddering, his body quivering almost as violently as the gelatin mass in the doorway a few seconds ago. It's all just a sick game. It wants to keep us crying out for help. It likes it and we can't stop or else and no one else comes and we'll be trapped forever. Trapped where? I asked. My own eyes growing wide as a sharp chill pricked its way down my back. He pointed toward the station again. I lit again into the dark mass in the doorway. Reggie's in there. In there between our world and Ed's. It's from another world, you see. It's here to pull in new prey, constantly rotating, taking new victims in a never-ending cycle by twisting and pulling them apart to force them to cry out for help through the broadcast. I started to go for the doorway. What are you doing? My friend's in there. I have to get him out. Wait, he shouted, grabbing my arm. You can't. If you go in there, you'll be trapped. Well, I just can't sit here and do nothing. I stopped when I heard the radio starting to fade into static. The broadcast was ending and sure enough, the station was fading along with it. I jerked my arm free and sprinted, hurling myself into the doorway. It was when I landed face down into concrete, however, that I realized I was too late. The station was far too far faded, 
gone back to whatever world or dimension it came from. Reggie, no! Reggie! I cried. He's gone. He's trapped in between with it. I shot up and immediately rushed the man, snatching him by his worn out shirt collar. How do I get him back? I was seeing red. I had half my mind to throw him to the ground and stomp him down right there in the dirt. How do I make him come back? You can't. He stammered, frightened. You have to wait till we broadcast the signal again. When? He shrugged. I don't know, to be honest. It depends on how long it makes him suffer before he breaks and tries to cry for help. I looked over to the now empty space and released him. He scurried away like a mouse in the direction closest to the town. I stayed behind. And that brings me to now. I haven't heard the broadcast or seen these station appear again, but I know it well. And when it does, I know that I'll hear Reggie crying out for mercy in that distorted voice just like the man was. I don't want to do it, but I know that I have to. I have to go in there and free him. That's why I'm writing this. As a warning, what this thing is, I don't know, and I'm afraid for when I have to find out. At the same time, it's my fault that Reggie's trapped. I just can't go on while he's trapped there, in between worlds. So I'm begging you now, don't come looking for me, please. If you hear the broadcast or find the radio station, 66.69 FUTRFM, for the love of God, ignore it. God knows, I wish I did now.